This is Karen. Welcome back, everybody. I am Shane and my tongue. <laughs> Today we're looking at part two of electronic tongues and acquired taste. And the vocabulary words are defend. Defend. The soldiers were ready to defend the city against an enemy attack. Advertise. Advertise. At the meeting, we decided that we would no longer advertise on the radio. Really? Mm. Consumer. Consumer. Studies showed that consumers preferred the company's previous bottle design. Distinguish. Distinguish. I have trouble distinguishing Courtney from her sister. Because they're twins. Oh. Spiciness. Spiciness. The restaurant's menu uses symbols to indicate the spiciness of each dish. Okay. So we're still talking about this cool invention, mm. electronic tongues, Or right? Or e-tongue. That's right. You can call it E for electronic, right? Yeah. E-tongues. All right. So there's also, we talked about some of the uses, but mm -hmm. there's some uses where in the marketplace, people are trying to trick people. Okay. So, for example, mm. Scotch whiskey. Yes. It's very famous for, as it ages, mm -hmm. it becomes better tasting. And it's more expensive, yes. right? So what happens is people will just age it for one year instead of like 18 years or 30 years and just put the label mm -hmm. that it's 30 years. Mm. And there's no way to test this right now. So an electro, the e tongue would mm -hmm. be able to find out if this liquid really is, is like an 18 year old whiskey right. or just one year old mm. huh that's really useful right yeah. and also we can use that e tongues to test the spiciness too when you're trying to make some new dishes create a new spicy flavor you don't have to get people to test an experiment right they don't because people would need to take a break and that could hurt a lot they even have some youtube videos of people doing spice challenges and that could be dangerous yes right oh, so the e-tongue is going to be really helping us in the future exactly keeping our mouth from being too hot cool okay <laughs> let's learn more about these e-tongues enjoy electronic tongues an acquired taste the truth is that e-tongues can do a lot more than any human tongue ever could. With this in mind, the food industry is using the technology in interesting ways. Scotch whiskey is known to get better the more it ages, as the price of a good scotch shows. But sometimes people try to sell one-year-old scotch for the price of 18-year-old scotch. To defend against this, electronic tongues are used to compare whiskey samples which ensures that the whiskey is as advertised. Today's lesson is called Electronic Tongues and Acquired Taste, Part 2. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Mike. Yesterday we started talking about electronic tongues. These are machines that are really made to do what the tongue does for us but it's a machine and it's used more in a scientific way. It can test things that humans don't want to eat or try or taste. It can judge new products, new cough syrups. It can test dirty water to see how the pollution is, even testing or tasting human urine or pee to see if people have early signs mm. of cancer. So it's an amazingly sensitive thing that does what our tongue does, but it allows us to not do those things because yes. we don't want to do those with there our tongue. There you go. And don't worry, an e-tongue or an electronic tongue will not replace your tongue. An e-tongue won't be able to tell you whether something is going to taste good for you. We so don't worry about we that. We won't take it to dinner with us. It's true. Okay. Anyways, yes, e-tongues though, they are fantastic. They do have their place. Yes, the truth is, is that e-tongues can do a lot more than any human tongue ever could. Still, they can't tell you whether you're going to like something as far as food is concerned. Anyways, though, with this in mind, the food industry is using the technology 
in interesting ways.、Oh, okay, so yesterday it was a little bit more about how science was using the electronic tongue. Let's look at the food industry. Scotch whiskey is known to get better the more it ages, as the price of a good Scotch shows. Yeah, Scotch whiskey, a type of alcohol, is、uh, is famous for getting better and more expensive as it sits in a barrel and gets older, kind of like wine. So、uh, you can look at the prices of Scotch, and a 21-year-old or 25-year-old Scotch will be more than a 12-year-old, and a lot of people would say that's because it's better. But it says, but sometimes people try to sell one-year-old Scotch. For the price of eighteen-year-old scotch,、ah, so they won't be able to tell the difference. People get、mm. tricky. They're basically scamming people or conning the consumer, tricking the consumer by selling something that they wouldn't normally buy—a very young scotch—and then telling people it's very old and making it very expensive. Anyways, to defend against this scotch fraud, electronic tongues are used to compare whiskey samples. Which ensures that the whiskey is as advertised. Yes, you are getting the real deal. If you want an 18-year-old, you'll be getting an 18-year-old bottle of scotch and not a one-year-old bottle of scotch. Anyways, here we got the verb defend to talk about. Okay, if you defend against something, you're trying to keep something from happening. Okay, you're. Trying to keep yourself safe by preventing something bad from happening to you. Now, more generally, if you defend yourself or something, you keep yourself safe by fighting back against an attack. Let's say, like if you are in a fort, let's say you might have to defend the town, your fort, against、uh, an attacking army or something like that. Speaking of which, for example, the soldiers were ready to defend the city against an enemy attack. Okay, so here we see that the whiskey should be as advertised. That's what this electric tongue will do. It will test something expensive like whiskey or wine to make sure it's the same as the company says it is. Now, when companies advertise, they basically let you, the people with the money, the shopper. Know about the things the company has that you might want to buy. They're trying to sell things to you by giving you information. Those advertisements, signs, posters, things on television or the internet, paid for by the company, will give you that information. Now, if something is as advertised, that means that we, the buyer, when we get it, it looks just like. They told us it would look in the advertisement. We've probably all had the experience of going to a fast food restaurant. You get your your hamburger, or your ice cream sundae, and you're like, this doesn't look as fresh. It doesn't look as nice and attractive and as delicious as the one in the advertisement. It's not as advertised. Now, hopefully, the things you buy are as advertised. They do look and work and are as great. As it looked in the company's advertisements when they advertise, when they let you know about their product. All right, we have this example sentence. At the meeting, we decided we would no longer advertise on the radio. Maybe start advertising on the internet instead. All right, that brings us to our break, and we're going to come back very shortly with more from our article. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。我们在第一天的课文读到，电子蛇可以帮忙检测人类没办法品尝或是不想要品尝的东西。那它有非常多的功能。现在食品工业正在用有趣的方式来使用这项科技。像很多人都知道，苏格兰威士忌它熟成越久，味道就越好。那年份越久的威士忌，它价格越高。不过有一些不孝商人可能会用十八年威士忌的价格，然后来卖这个只有熟成一年的威士忌。为了要防止这样的情况，人们就可以用电子蛇来比较不同的威士忌样品，来确保它跟广告一样。好，先来看两个单字 ，defend，defend， Defend, 它是动词，表示捍卫、防卫。那么 advertise，advertise， advertise, 它是动词，表示为什么来做广告、宣传的意思。好，那么在字尾加上 m e n t 会变成名词 advertisement。Advertisement 常常被简称为 ad ad， 它表示广告。刚刚两位老师用到几个跟诈骗有关的单词，我们可以学起来哦。像 scam 跟 con 这两个字都可以当名词或当动词来表达诈骗、欺诈。那么 scam 是拼作 s c a m， 
，那么 con 是拼作 c o n。好，那么再来看还有一个字叫 fraud。F R A U D fraud， 它当名词表示诈欺呀、啊、诈骗，还可以用来指骗子或是假货。接华课文中 ，Electronic tongues, an acquired taste. Similarly, many consumers mistakenly buy impure honey because they can't distinguish between real and fake honey. However, e tongues can. They determine a honey sample's purity using electrical bursts. Okay. Before the break, we were talking about scotch. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about honey. Now, similarly, many consumers mistakenly buy impure honey because they can't distinguish between real and fake honey. So there you go, people. These consumers, I should say, they buy honey, but they don't know what they're buying. They don't know the difference between real and fake honey. So sometimes they buy. Impure or bad honey. Anyways, here we've got the word consumer to talk about. Here, a consumer is not unlike a customer, someone who buys something, someone who pays for services, or something like that. Okay, that's what consumers are in this particular situation. For example, studies showed that consumers preferred the company's previous bottle design. Hmm. And we also had the verb to distinguish. To distinguish means to tell two things apart. They might look the same. They might be almost exactly the same. But if you know them, if you're familiar, if you've seen them before, you'll be able to say, "Ah, they are very similar, but there are differences. I can distinguish them." We often look at, you know, a mother bird. How does a mother bird tell its children apart? How does it distinguish them? Well, it has some magical ability that we don't understand. But for us in our own lives, we might, you know, go to school and have a, a school bag that looks very similar to one of our fellow classmates. But we know the difference. We know that ours has a little mark on the side or something like that. That little clue, that little bit of a difference, can help us to distinguish this. From the things that look very, very similar. For example, I have trouble distinguishing Courtney from her sister. They're twins. They look very similar. I can't tell them apart. I can't distinguish them. Okay, so human tongue sometimes can't tell the difference between real、mm. and fake honey. However, e tongues can. They they determine a honey sample's purity using electrical bursts. I'll say that again because science is awesome. They e tongues determine a honey sample's purity using z- z- electrical bursts. They zap it with electricity. Yeah, human tongue. Last time I looked, can't do that.、Mm, no. Not a lot of electricity coming out of human you'd, tongues. You'd be a Marvel superhero if you、Pretty、could、much. shoot electricity from your tongue.、Pretty、but、much. I wouldn't see that movie. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be back soon. 除了用来检测威士忌的样本，电子蛇也可以用来帮忙检测蜂蜜的纯度。课文提到说，有很多消费者因为分不出这个蜂蜜的真假而误买了不纯的蜂蜜。有了电子蛇，就可以用电子脉冲来判定蜂蜜样品它的纯度。好，文中的 electrical burst。Electrical burst 在这边是指电子脉冲。那老师们刚好用到一个动词是 zap， zap， z a p。好，这个动词它就有电极的意思。好，那我们再看课文两个单字 ：consumer， consumer， 它表示消费者 ；distinguish， distinguish， 这个动词表示辨认出或是分辨。我们常常会用 distinguish between A and B 来表达辨别 A 和 B 的不同。好，那顺便补充一下，我们也可以用到片语 tell apart。我们可以用 tell somebody apart 或是 tell something apart 来表达分辨什么、区分什么什么。好，再来看补充单字 purity。purity 它表示纯度，它的形容词是 p u r e pure。Pure， 它就是形容纯的、纯净的或是无杂质的。如果在前面加上否定字首 I am， 变成相反词 impure，impure impure 就表示不纯的。好，接华课文中 ，Electronic tongues, an acquired taste. 
E-tongues can also analyze a sample's taste and spiciness precisely. This provides scientists with the data they need to test and perfect new flavors of spicy foods. An added bonus is that electronic tongues never need a break to cool their mouth down. As it stands, this technology could lead to better tasting and safer food, among other things. Best of all, to achieve these results, humans will no longer have to put their lives or their tongues on the line. Scotch, no problem. Honey, no problem. E-tongues can do it all. Really, yeah, get this, there's more. E-tongues can also analyze a sample's taste and spiciness precisely. They can analyze these things precisely with a lot of detail. Yeah, hmm, how does this taste? Give me a number. How spicy is this? Give me a number, something that we can precisely measure, and apparently E-tongues can do that for us. How amazing. By the way, here we have the word spiciness it's a noun. Spicy is the adjective, spiciness is the noun. When we're talking about the spiciness of something, we're talking about how hot that thing is, but not in terms of temperature. Spicy food or foods with a lot of spiciness, when you eat them, they make the inside of your mouth feel very hot and warm because of peppers and stuff like that. That's, that's what spiciness is all about. For example, the restaurant's menu uses symbols to indicate the spiciness of each dish. Yeah, sometimes you'll see a, a red chili pepper next to that thing on the menu, and it'll tell you how hot a dish is. And if you see three chili peppers <sighs> next to the food, hot. that will be something that I will not avoid, uh, not order. So this thing sounds quite useful to people like me who get, you know, very, very uh, nervous about super spicy food. I enjoy it, but my body sometimes mm. doesn't agree. So how can they use it? It says this provides scientists with the data they need to test and perfect new flavors of spicy food. So imagine a company that makes spicy potato chips or spicy sauces or a fast food company introducing a new spicy burger. They can do all this very, very accurately, very, very carefully so they can get that level of spiciness exactly where they want. And it says an added bonus is electronic tongues never need a break to cool their mouth down. If it was me, I'd be swallowing milk and water and doing all sorts of things to bring that spicy level down in my mouth. But with a machine, it can eat spicy food 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and never have any bad problems. Yeah, there afterwards. you go. The E-tongue the e would eat the spicy food and say, oh, there's this much spicy chemical in it. They wouldn't go, ah, spicy. My, my tongue is burning. Yeah. No, they say, there's this much capsaicin in this food, therefore it will be this spicy. Anyways, as it stands, this technology could lead to better tasting and safer food, among other things. Best of all, though, to achieve these results, humans will no longer have to put their lives or their tongues on the line. And we started there by talking about ancient Rome where people did put their lives on the line when they were tasting food. They wanted to make sure the emperor's food didn't contain deadly poison. There you go. That's a great thing. And absolutely, it's something that will be around and being used in all sorts of ways into the future. So what do you guys think? And for that, we have a question to kind of spur your thinking and some conversation. How do you think society can benefit most from the use of e-tongue? Sure, tasting spicy foods is interesting and useful, but does that really help the most people in the world? No. no. But nowadays, because mm. of e-tongues, people will no longer have to undergo invasive procedures to figure out whether or not they're sick, okay? Sometimes oh. doctors have to do some stuff to you that's uncomfortable to figure out if you're sick or not. But now maybe e-tongues can analyze things like urine and you won't have to undergo those bad examinations and that's a good thing. And that's a very good idea. I'd say e-tongues are able to taste drinking water. So I think every big city and town in the world should have one so they can work towards having their water be drinkable. There you go. That'd be a good thing for lots of people. All right, folks, with that, our lesson has now come to an end. 
We'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye. 电子蛇还有其他什么样的功用呢？课文提到说，它可以精确地分析出样品的味道和辛辣程度，像是它可以帮助科学家精准地测试出这个新口味的辣度，来提供需要的资料等等。而且呢，电子蛇用来测试辛辣食物还有一个额外的好处，就是它不用停下来休息，不需要喝水啊，吃别的东西，赶快来解辣消火。有了这样的科技，人类就不需要牺牲自己的舌头了。好，我们最后来看单字 spiciness。spiciness 它表示辛辣味或是辣度。那它的形容词是 spicy。spicy 就是形容辣的。辣椒之所以会辣，它的主要来源就是这个辣椒素。我们顺便学一下 capsaicin 就是辣椒素，它是拼作 c a p。S A I C I N capsaicin， 好，这个东西它就是让辣椒有辣味的化学物质。好，再来看补充单字 bonus。bonus 在这边当名词表示额外的好处，或者是可以指红利。刚刚 Jeff 老师在最后提到说，有了电子蛇来帮忙检测尿液，也许人们就不需要经历一些侵入性的医疗程序来找出这个癌症的迹象了。好，那老师这时候用到动词 undergo。Undergo， 它表示经历或者是遭受，它是拼作 U N D E R G O。Undergo， 还有用到侵入性这个形容词叫做 invasive。Invasive， I N V A S I V E。Invasive 是形容侵入性的。好，那么以上是今天的讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有五个。第一个是用不定词 to v 表达目的。第二个是 ensure 加上 that 子句。第三个是 as 当连接词表达如同。第四个是 best of all。第五个是 on the line。好，我们先来学 to 加原形动词表示目的。不定词 to 加原形动词，它可以表达目的，来表达说为了怎么样怎么样。那这个 to 在这边就相当于 in order to。我们可以把 to verb 或者是 in order to verb 摆在句首或是主要子句的后方。举例来说 ，She swims every day to stay in shape。为了维持健康，她每天游泳。再造个例句 ，In order to save time。They took a taxi to the airport. 为了节省时间，他们搭计程车去机场。好，接着我们来学 ensure 加上 that 子句。动词 ensure 它表示确保、保证，然后后面常常会接 that 子句来表达确保某事会发生，确保某事会实现。举例来说 ，I'll ensure that everyone knows when and where the meeting will be held. 我会确保所有的人都知道会议的时间和地点，没有一个人会被绕高。好，接着我们来学 as 做连接词，表示如同。as 可以当连接词，表示如同，就像或是像什么什么一样。像是 the product doesn't work as advertised， 这个产品不像广告宣传的一样有效。什么青春怒磨，让你八十岁变十八岁，骗人的嘛！磨完以后，然后转个圈，就少了。六十岁，呃，不对，我的算术不好，八十变十八，我不会算。好，不管怎么样，这个例句里面的 as advertised， 它是由 as it is advertised 省略了 it is 而来的。那 as advertised 就表示如同广告的一样。好，接着我们来学 best of all。副词片语 best of all， 它表示最棒的事，也就是说某个东西已经有很多很多优点，然后我们用 best of all 来引出最棒的部分，例如。The room at the hotel was clean and comfortable, and best of all, it has a beautiful view of the sea. 那间房间干净又舒适，最棒的是它还有美丽的海景，有无敌海景。好，那我们最后来学 on the line， 不是在线上，在网络上哦。On the line， 它表示冒着风险，岌岌可危，常常会搭配动词 put。或是 place， 或者是 lay， 表达说冒着什么样的危险，或是将什么置于危险之中。例如 ，She laid her career on the line to speak out against injustice。这不是说她把事业放在网络上哦，而是说她把事业置于危险之中，她冒着毁掉事业的风险，公开反对不公义的事。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。
everybody！ 欢迎来到 English in Action。I'm Shane. I'm Holly. <laughs> you look really pretty today, Holly. Thank you. I spent a lot of time on my hair today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, you look nice. Um, thank you. You can say that again. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it again. I already said it twice. You can't really say that you think you look good. You have to say, "Oh, 哪里哪里 Oh no, I look ugly." Oh no, don't don't don't, okay? Oh, you can say that again. We will continue the conversation. I'm so tired of working here. Yes, we are definitely too good for this job. You can say that again. Let's go. Actually, I love working at this、oh, job because you're such a wonderful partner. You can say that again. <laughs> I'm not saying that again, okay? Okay, this sentence's meaning is not that you have to say it twice. Right. You just have to agree with him, right? Okay.、Yeah. You could also say, "Don't say that again." Don't say that again. 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 You're right about that. You're right about that. Okay, so if you don't want to keep saying that over and over and over again in Chinese, you want to say it in English. Then, then what? Then, 靠！哦，靠！门就对。耶！你好聪明啊。I'm not saying that again. Oh, I thought you were going to. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>